In today's episode, two elk hunters are ambushed by not just one grizzly bear, but two, resulting in them both being brutally mauled. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. These are the terrifying final minutes of Mark Uptane, mauled to death by a grizzly bear. Welcome to Final Affliction. It was September 14th, 2018. Corey Chuban traveled from his home in Florida to the Teton Wilderness. This is a vast and rugged expanse of protected land located in the state of Wyoming, United States. It is situated within the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and is part of the Bridger Teton National Forest covering an area of approximately 585,000 acres. It is one of the largest wilderness areas in the United States. Corey's chosen adventure was to go bull hunting for elk. The thrill of the hunt was enticing, tracking the animal, finding it, and then silently closing in for the perfect shot. Corey opted to hire a guide for his hunt with a company called Martin Outfitters. Hunting guide Mark Uptane was the best around. He knew the Teton wilderness, and he knew the prime locations to bag a bull elk. Often trekking in on horseback, Martin Outfitters proposed to get the hunter out into the wild areas where the big game roam. The two men set off towards Terrace Mountain. The scenery was beautiful, breathtaking vistas all along the route. Hikers who follow the trails travel through meadows, aspen groves, and over boulders. The region offers some of the best flora and fauna around. There are plenty of warnings regarding bears in the area, and hikers are advised to carry bear spray with them. But Corey and Mark weren't planning on bumping into any bears. They were out looking for elk. Even so, they knew to always expect the unexpected and carried firearms and spray for protection, just in case. They had been tracking an elk for some time when they finally came across the animal. It stood proud and tall, its fur glistening in the afternoon sun. The two men crept closer. Mark held back, allowing his client to step forwards and take the shot. Corey raised his loaded bow. He exhaled as he released the bowstring. The arrow flew through the air. It struck the elk. It was a good shot. The elk was mortally wounded, but managed to dart off into the undergrowth in a last-ditch effort to escape its death. Mark and Corey followed it, but they lost the blood trail and light was fading. They decided to head back to camp and pick up where they left off tomorrow. It was a shame that they couldn't complete the hunt, and not knowing where the animal had vanished to was frustrating. At first light, the pair set off once more. They returned to the site of the hunt and followed the trail left by the elk. It wasn't long before they found the dead animal, lying on its side on the ground. It had been untouched by predators. The carcass was pristine. The elk hadn't made it far from where Corey had shot it. The two men knelt down beside it, admiring its beauty, admiring the shot. They began to field dress it, removing its limbs, gutting it, and quartering it to make carrying the weight easier to handle. Mark began to cut off the elk's head, but they never finished field dressing it. The smell of fresh blood, the smell of the kill had traveled through the air. The two men were not alone. Out of nowhere, two bears rushed from the undergrowth, barreling downhill towards the two hunters. They were first seen in an all-out charge. No warning, no mock charge. The two grizzly bears had ambushed them from the high ground. The attack took the two hunters by surprise. They had been caught completely off guard. All they could do was yell at the bears in an attempt to scare them off, but it didn't work, and one bear leapt onto Mark. He let out a cry as he was pushed into the soil. He had bear spray in his hip holster, but hadn't had time to pull it out. The weight of the bear crushed him. It bit into his face and slashed his torso with its long, sharp claws. The other bear stood watching from a few feet away. It didn't join in the attack. It didn't lunge at Corey. Instead, it shifted uneasily on its feet. Corey knew he had to act fast. He ran to their packs, which were a few yards away. Inside Mark's was a pistol, a Glock. He pulled it out and pointed it at the bear, but he couldn't get the pistol to fire. He fumbled with the mechanism, but something was wrong. It wasn't his gun. He wasn't familiar with it. Why wasn't it firing? 
All the while, Mark was being bitten and sliced. He was being shaken and pummeled into the ground. He was trying to fight back, pushing the bear's dripping jowls away from his face, but the bear was strong and powerful. As Corey stepped closer, pointing the gun at the bear, he repeatedly pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. Then his heart leapt. The bear stopped its attack and looked up at him. In an instant, it lunged at Corey. It swiped at his feet and sent him crashing to the ground. Corey knew this was bad news. He tried to protect his head and the back of his neck. He tried to curl up into a ball and protect his body. But the bear was ferocious in its attack. It didn't let up. It swiped powerfully with its paws, slicing into Corey's flesh, cutting his skin and tearing his muscle. He could feel the pressure of each bite, the searing sensation of each slash of the claws, but adrenaline kept the pain at bay. Eventually, after a frenzied attack, Corey managed to wriggle free and the bear turned its attention back to Mark. In the couple of seconds between the bear mauling Corey and turning back to Mark, Corey threw the gun to Mark and fled the scene, but the gun landed out of Mark's reach. Corey needed to get help. He needed to find a phone. He knew Mark wouldn't hold out much longer. He ran up the hill back to the horses. It was a grueling 400-yard sprint uphill to reach them. He glanced back over his shoulder to see Mark on his feet, trying to fight off the enormous brown bear. Corey had severe lacerations and puncture wounds to his legs, chest, and arms, but he managed to climb onto one of the horses and ride to the top of a high ridge. Once there, he was able to get a phone signal and call for help. A helicopter was dispatched to the remote location, and Corey was picked up and taken to St. John's Medical Center, where he received treatment for his injuries. The authorities couldn't locate Mark. As the night drew in, the search was called off. What happened to Mark in his final moments remains a mystery, but it seems he put up a hell of a fight. He was likely still alive when rescuers arrived for Corey two hours after his initial emergency call. They had simply failed to find the young family man who was likely still fighting for his life. It was an agonizing wait until the following morning for both rescuers and Corey. But as soon as dawn broke, the search for the hunting guide resumed. Mark's mauled body was found 50 yards from where the attack had taken place. He had managed to empty the contents of his bear spray canister at some point during the fight. The smell of the pepper spray was all over the area, and on the head of the bear, authorities eventually killed. It seems Mark had walked the 50 yards uphill himself, blood streaks running down his face and no sign of a struggle or of him being dragged to his final resting place suggests he walked there himself. But the bears had pursued him and had killed the 37-year-old with severe bites to the back of his head. Wyoming wildlife managers set traps for the bears. They used the elk carcass as bait and the young male cub was caught alive in the leg trap. He was euthanized by officials. Shortly later, the female bear charged the investigators aggressively and was shot dead at the scene. Although hindsight won't change the past, it does highlight the errors made in this attack and possible ways in which the attack could have been avoided. The two men carried with them bear deterrence, but through lack of knowledge and mistakes, they were not used effectively. The 10 mm Glock was inspected by experts and was found to be in good working order. However, because Corey was unfamiliar with how to operate the firearm, it was not used during the attack. Corey didn't carry his bear spray on him. Instead, he had left it in his pack because he had found it cumbersome on his hip whilst riding the horse. The reasons for this bear attack are not certain. Bears usually attack for one of three reasons, defending their young, their food, or actively hunting. In Mark and Corey's case, the most likely explanation for the attack is that the bears wanted the elk carcass. They may not have laid claim to it yet, but they had been attracted by its scent and wanted it for themselves. The female bear probably wasn't defending her cub, as the two men hadn't taken her by surprise or posed any threat to the young bear. She was unlikely to be actively hunting the pair of hunters, as her attack was not a predatory one. Whatever the reason, Mark lost his life tragically young and left behind his wife and their five children. He was a loving family man and a well-liked member of the community who tragically 
met his terrifying final affliction.